Okay, so uh, it's my great uh, pleasure to welcome you uh, to the 2019 ABM and Hybrid Modeling Bootcamp and Incubator. Um, uh, I want to um, express my thanks to uh, all of the uh, participants for uh, bearing with the uh, the fact that our elevator is out of service. It's the first time in my 14 years here that I ever remember the elevator is not being available. And I know many of you trudged uh, a long distance up the steps and probably even a longer distance from home to get here. So I'd like to, um, uh, to make sure that the event lives up to its potential um, in terms of delivering value. And to that end, um, I will let you know that I worked for uh, most of the weekend crafting the particulars of this event to reflect your expressed interests uh, as, as indicated by the uh, surveys um, and some discussions I've had with, with individual members of the uh, participants uh, who were also at our last event. Um, what you are seeing here is the uh, result of many years of evolution of materials in this broad area for teaching. I've been giving some version of this event uh, for uh, uh, since about 2012 um, through many different renditions, probably several dozen, somewhere around 30 different instances of it. But this event will be unique because it is crafted to address the particular uh, express interests of the participants. I'm going to give some introductory uh, remarks related to setting expectations for the event. I am then going to see if we can get a head start on jumping into some material that will expose you to the tools we'll be using through the event as well as to some particulars of the, um, of the modeling philosophy that I'll, I'll be, um, uh, be expressing and some of the ways that, that it uh, manifests throughout, uh, throughout the event. So um, I want to start with some uh, administrative view. Okay. Um, uh, there's, this event has a number of goals that will be important to keep in mind uh, as it plays out. Um, uh, perhaps its foremost aim is to provide a sense of, of the, uh, the trade-offs, uh, strengths, uh, limitations, and capacities associated with agent-based and hybrid modeling. Um, agent-based and hybrid modeling in an era where what it means to build an agent-based model that's responsive to, um, to uh, extant data sources and um, uh, and uh, a model that includes hybrid features, such as multi-scale models you'll be seeing throughout this event, uh, that, that capture uh, dynamics in a fashion that transcends any one modeling paradigm. The, the reality of what we can do in this area and what, um, what is uh, most um, uh, efficacious in accomplishing current research objectives is changing. And uh, the the materials in the boot camp will reflect sort of a, a current perspective that's rather different than it was when I first initiated this boot camp. In the era of big data, and in the era where computational resources increasingly make possible rich models that knit together dynamics at many different levels. Um, for example, a physiologic level of uh, clinical interactions, health service interactions, um, up to the level of, of public health. Um, I'm also seeking to, to train team members, recognizing that not everyone here may aspire to be the modeler who builds, um, builds the models from the ground up, um, whose hands are on the keyboard and on the mouse uh, in structuring all elements of that model. I'm aiming to train team members so they're comfortable running, understanding many elements of and performing small modifications at ABMs, even if they're not the primary person uh, responsible for the technical implementation of that ABM. Okay? Um, and the event offers kind of different tracks for those seeking to go deeper 
and to actually build and implement the nitty gritty of the IBM and others were more interested in designing and shaping and scoping and using and understanding the limitations of as well as the, the insights from ABMs. Recognizing that, that both needs uh, are, are uh, there's interest in both needs in the room. Um, we're hoping uh, along those lines to create informed consumers of these models, people who, who can take a critical eye towards a model and, and, and assess uh, what some of its uh, limitations might be that might not be obvious at, at first blush. Um, I do aspire in some of these sessions to provide modelers with hands-on familiarity uh, with uh, the functions of one particular package, any logic, which I think is the least bad of packages out there, um, uh, although it has many limitations um, of its own. Um, and I'd be glad to speak openly about those limitations and how we've had to work with them. Uh, both in the area of hybrid modeling and multi-scale models, as well as more general. I'm hoping to convey theory and practice related to building of models um, in three system science traditions. This, this event is focally about ABM and hybrid modeling, and it's, and it's so for a reason. I have somewhere over 25 years of experience with system dynamics modeling, um, around 30 applying ABM modeling, um, and somewhat less with discrete event modeling. That's largely been in the past 14 years since I've been here. But I chose to deliver this event on agent-based and hybrid modeling for a reason. I do so because of the unique features associated with ABM and, and hybrid um, uh, models in, in addressing certain needs, uh, certain investigatory needs. But a lot of the tools and techniques that we'll be talking about, while that's the focal point, apply to system science models more generally. You know, I'm an enthusiastic proponent of compartmental or system dynamics modeling, on the one hand, um, agent-based modeling, both being used as lenses to understand situations. But in today's world, I mean, even more firmer belief, uh, I have an even more firm belief that uh, some of the biggest, the best ways we can use these techniques is together, is to weave them together in models where the boundaries between those different techniques change as our learning with the model progresses. Okay, so we'll, we'll be seeing that, but fundamentally, someone who was in here only interested in compartmental or, or system dynamics modeling we'll still get a lot out of this event that carries over to those spheres. Because when it comes to sensitivity analysis and calibration, when it comes to model conceptualization, when it comes to issues of emergent behavior and nonlinear dynamics and tipping points, a lot of those er things carry from one of these spheres to another. And uh, the commonalities there exceed the differences. Okay? Um, and finally, for those seeking to pursue it, which by the, to judge by the initial survey is a majority of teams. I'm hoping that we can use this event, including Saturday, to deliver on a first cut at running dynamic models responsive to your interests and needs. So actually prototyping out a model. Suppose you're interested in doing this in a different modeling platform. Um, maybe your interests are in NetLogo, or maybe your interests in a repast. Um, trying out and prototyping a model quickly here will still help you when it comes to structuring a more responsive, well-scoped, uh, boundary-set model for the tool of your choice. This is not fundamentally an event about any logic. This is an event which happens to use any logic as a tool to explore issues that cut across um, ABM and hybrid modeling platforms, okay. um, and broadly system science platforms. So a few notes on the schedule. Um, uh, for those interested, a draft version of the schedule is available. 
uh, through through the links to the materials that I provided earlier. If people are interested in browsing it, I will simply note that um, you can get to it uh, at this um, uh, at this URL here. This ABM Bootcamp 2019 materials. Okay, so um, that you should be able to to go find uh, at this address a, a PDF document that lays out a provisional schedule for the event. This schedule is notable in a number of regards. Um, one thing is it mixes together things that are oft pursued in different events, okay? Um, Hands-on lectures. There'll be a lot of lectures here where I ask you to follow along with models. And some of you may be more interested in the models than they are interested in my comments on the models. Um, you know, you may, you may feel, okay, this is, uh, I've heard this before, you know, there's this thing called emergence. Um, and you know there's the phenomenon of nonlinearity, and really what you're interested in is how did I accomplish this in this model you're seeing, or what does this really mean? And you're welcome to drill in on those things. Um, others, if you will be interested in following along, perhaps because you're interested in learning how to build the model in a very structured way. So there's going to be a lot of hands-on lectures that mix uh, model exploration with a little bit of model building so you understand these building blocks out of which models are built. Or for those who are interested in going deeper in parallels, uh, parallel sessions. There's going to be a, a, a whole lot of case studies. We have case studies um, that are contributed in a wide variety of health areas um, from uh, communicable disease to multiple types of chronic disease and and chronic disease complications, environmental epidemiology, zoonoses, uh, a wide variety of other, other um, components uh, can be found in the case studies. And uh, we will try to make sure that case studies are featured, which are of greatest interest. So if you would like to see case studies um, uh, that you hear about through students, but we don't have featured in the schedule, let me know and I'll I'll see what I can do. I'll get the Alps working on that. Um, I will further note that some of these case studies, in, well, I'll come back to that. Um, there's going to be project work each day um, for those interested in pursuing it, and there'll be some discussion periods. There'll be retrospectives of materials and welcoming questions. The number one, my number one priority in this in this boot camp, as in my other events, is to answer questions that reflect your interests, okay? And um, I'm delighted to put aside the schedule and dialogue about issues that are troubling you. Because you can find a certain fraction of this material of mine online. You will find me holding forth, <laughs> as, as some of you know, online. There's, you know, probably somewhere around two to 3,000 videos of me, um, with about 2,000 of them probably talking about related material to this. Um, I will tell you that never has it been quite approached with the exact slant I'll be taking in this boot camp, and there'll be particular, you know, um, uh, particular innovations that I'll be adding, particular bits of, of, of flair I'll be adding to address your interests. But the foremost need here is to address your questions. So if you have questions, raise your hand or bring it up as an issue to me during a break, and I'll see if I can address it, okay? And that includes putting together new lectures. I have way too much material. Jeff McDonald, my colleague from Australia, who quite a few of you know, um, have the pleasure of meeting the Sage of Sydney, um, Jeff, uh, tells me that the biggest challenge with my boot camps is what 90% of materials to leave out. I think recently he started to say 95% of materials. So if you want to hear about something that's not featured, let me know. And I'll, chances are I may have a, a lecture on that that I could trot out slides for and, and potentially even deliver. There's a lot of time on Saturday where I've been known to sometimes give extra lectures. 
um, and, uh, and I'm happy to do that. Okay, so please prioritize driving the, the materials through your questions. That's, that's not an aberration from the schedule, it's not an anomaly, it is how it should be. Um, and because of that, the schedule will evolve, probably drastically, uh, due, to, due to expressed interests, okay? So um, maybe everyone's gonna be interested in case studies and, very, and no one's interested in the more advanced materials uh, which you can hear in parallel with them. If so, we'll reflect that in the schedule and reorganize things a little bit. I spent a lot of time trying to build a schedule crafted for your needs, but as Clausewitz said, no plan survives contact with the enemy. You're not the enemy, but I expect that I'll have a much more informed understanding of what your needs are two days from now if you come forward with requests, okay? So please come forward with requests. My, my goal is to make sure this, this, that every one of you goes away feeling that this event has addressed some key needs. Oh my gosh, um, this is, this is um, uh, outdated, excuse me. Um, so I will aspire to make screencast recordings available. By screencast, I mean my slides and uh, regrettably my voice. Um, regrettably on two accounts, I suppose, um, available at, at, at this, uh, this link. Uh, it's currently empty, but uh, within a few hours, I'll try to post things, okay? Um, so uh, I'll, I'll be trying to keep up with how things are going. I'm actually recording these twice, <coughs> and you may see a little bit of um, back and forth from me. Um, some of these things are being recorded in a way that captures my toings and froings um, uh, in this bear pit up here at the front of the room. Um, but I'm also recording it off my screen. And if we're lucky, I may be able to share with you ones that, uh, of each sort. Um, because, of this, uh, because of this recording, I'll, I'll just note, audio quality from the audience in this room tends to be not great. And so I will try to record um, through repeating questions on this Dalek of a microphone, okay? Um, and, and we'll try to make sure that, um, that questions get answered. Please come out, okay, yeah, these uh, same, same problems here. I've, I've shared the resources in the background materials, so I won't go through them there, but these are the two key links this year. I pared it down a little bit. Okay. So what are some of the resources? Um, there's a, a schedule. Now, an important feature of this schedule that began in the fair city of Melbourne um, in an earlier incarnation, of which has proven very, um, very fruitful, is I add to the schedule. The schedule is not merely an enumeration of the lecture titles. There are summaries associated with each lecture, okay? And what this, what this means uh, at an operational level is often the biggest themes from a given lecture that I want you to carry away, the take home messages, are, are written out in a fairly direct form in the schedule itself. So I would urge you to try to avoid thinking of the schedule as just sort of a, a passive document that tells you what's coming next. And Try to tap into these, particularly while I'm setting up and getting the audio going and the inevitable hitches come up. Please try to take a look at these summaries. Um, uh, and you'll carry away a better appreciation for what am I getting at here? What do I think are the key take-homes? What, what are those key points I want you to, to walk away with? Why am I covering this? Um, a lot of that will be clearer if you go to this uh, to the summaries in the schedule. Okay, so please try to do that. We don't have that for all the case studies. Um, that's future work, um, but uh, but see if you can make use of it for the um, for the schedule itself because you'll get a lot more on the lectures. I think if you can look at that. I have a set of lecture slides which. Um, uh, I will be posting. In the interim, I have posted some lecture slides 
uh, that will anticipate what their broad features are from, from last year. But uh, I'm, I'll try to update those with the actual slides that I give it because there'll be some differences. Um, example models. Um, this is going to be a key resource. Uh, it's an extremely occ frequent occurrence that I get requests from around the world to my example models. You know, I, I think it's multiple times a month at least. Um, sometimes it seems like many times a week. Um, and it's for good reason. We have uh, probably close to now 100 different example health system science models. Um, many of them hybrid models, uh, many of them not hybrid, um, which are available uh, for your browsing and use. Um, uh, these models are for free distribution, like almost all my materials. I would like to see it get used. Um, so I will just point these out to you because I want to orient you for two reasons. Number one, um, I want you to know about this as a resource for your projects. Okay, so if you go and the you follow this background materials to these materials here, you, if you click on that link, you will go to this area. And if you go to example models, you'll find uh, there's this any logic eight examples, and you will find uh, a whole swack of of different models here. Um, beyond this. You will note that, and in, in pursuant to the particular emphasis of, of this rendition of the boot camp, there is a hybrid models folder. Okay? Um, this event, this particular week, will, by participant demand, based on those pre servers, have a real focus on understanding, making use of, working with the limitations of, recognizing the strengths of hybrid models. And when I say hybrid, it's, um, it almost sounds like uh, a misplaced emphasis on the implementation. The point is these are models that happen to be articulated with multiple system science traditions, and that's why we use the term hybrid. But often they are implement, implemented with multiple system science traditions because they capture different sorts of dynamics at different places. They'll capture, for example, service delivery dynamics in one area, or physiological dynamics at another, or uh, dynamics associated with um, uh, changes in categorical states in another. And, and for that reason, it's convenient to use multiple techniques to, to, articulate, uh, to articulate them. So if you go into hybrid models, you will find uh, a couple, <coughs> uh, probably one to two dozen other models um, that uh, are explicitly hybrid in character and uh, some of them multi-scale. Okay, and so I mentioned that one reason I want to be able to take advantage of this is because of your projects. Chances are with a given project notion, a subset of these models overall, hybrid or not, will be of interest to you. And I'm going to try to highlight which ones might be of interest. Not because I necessarily expect you to be able to just, you know, copy and change a few things and you're all happy. Yeah, I'm happy if you do that, right? But, but it's more, what's more likely is it will be useful as a thought piece, as a kind of, um, as, as something to get you thinking about what the scope of your model could be or how you might organize it or or um, how you might uh, present output from it, or um, ways it characterizes the situation. Maybe it's in a similar area, maybe it, it uses similar um, research, it approaches similar research questions for a different condition. Maybe it's that it, the technical underpinnings have some commonalities. Whatever it is, there's a good chance that some of your models um, that you're gonna be building this week can get a, you can get a lot of insights from browsing these examples. So please make use of these early, make use of them often. Okay. I will further note, however, the second major use of these, these components, these, these example models, because before this hour is out, we will be making use of these 
for first of many lectures um, as, as part of the lecture, okay? We'll be opening them up and exploring them and, and learning from them, okay? So uh, please try to make use of, um, of these for your projects, but you will want to be familiar with them for the, um, to take advantage of many of the hands-on lectures as well. So they live here in the AnyLogic eight examples under, under example models, okay? Great. <clears throat> okay, so um, back to a couple of slides here. Um, background materials. Um, uh, I provide some links to a set of resources. For the first time, uh, this includes a community gathering site, which we have rolled out with NIH support for health modeling more generally, dynamic modeling and health more generally, and which was designed in, uh, at, at our institution uh, and was built over the course of a couple years um, with some early work done here and, and other work done in the States. Um, we'll be walking through that. Um, the background materials also include links to uh, playlists and, and other components. I have a one-page reference card. It's actually more, I think, than one page is now on any logic functions for those seeking to make use of any logic as a tool. Um, there's there's kind of a a quick a quick reference card that that we created. Um, as well as some things on like Hallmark's motivating system science approaches more generally. This one, this one page reference card, that's software specific. Um, this Hallmark's motivating use of system science, that's dynamic modeling um, uh, related. I will further note there's a set of step-by-step -step tutorials. For those who learn best by following things step-by-step, -step, there's a set of these tutorials for common of building up any logic models um, that illustrate uh, principles of agent-based modeling. And then I have some open-ended challenge problems, okay? So there's things in here for learners at different levels of familiarity and at different levels of specificity with respect to, um, with respect to uh, the, the types of uh, materials we're presenting here. Okay, um, I want to comment some on the roles of TAs. The room, you are surrounded, ladies and gentlemen, by a set of TAs. I'd like the TAs in the room to raise their hands so that um, people can uh, have an eye out for them, okay? Um, the TAs uh, are here to assist you in a variety of ways. Um, and uh, I've listed these here. Um, perhaps most importantly, these include brainstorming on use of these techniques in areas of, um, of interest to you and, um, and advising on what dynamic modeling could offer in areas uh, of this interest. Um, and you know, consultations about um, uh, about how modeling is, is used. They can also, they'll also in this regard be very helpful for the projects and I am hoping that every project will have one or two TAs associated with it to help you deliver, to help partner with you, orient you and, and help shape the model as well as to implement an example rendition of it responsive to your interest. Um, the TAs are also responsible for, uh, throughout the boot camp, for um, dealing with challenges computationally with, uh, with the models, building the models, um, following exercises, etc. So uh, for the participants, if you have any trouble, you, you call up a browser and it can't connect to a familiar site. You, you can't find um, the hybrid model folder. You, you can't open any logic. TAs, just raise your hand and the TAs will deploy. And they will deploy 
uh, with rapidness and precision. Um, and they will help you address your needs, okay? That's why they're here. Don't feel like it's an imposition or an interruption. That is part of, of how things should work, okay? And I'm gonna ask the TAs to be very careful looking around to make sure when people's hands are in the air um, that they get addressed uh, quickly, okay? Um, so TAs will be very important for this event. Get to know them um, well and you will uh, benefit from it. Um, okay. Um, I have a couple requests for participants. I, I, I began before most people came in, most participants came in, I had a bunch of requests for TAs. But there's a bunch of requests for participants that I do have as well, okay? Um, number one, um, I'd suggest you read the summary in the, in the um, schedule prior to the lecture if you can. Um, if, if while I'm getting set up, you could do that. Um, I think again, it will add to to the um, to the events for you. Secondly, if if you need any help, please raise your hand. The third thing is, and this this may seem a bit out of order, but when you're using any logic software, there'll be a function called autocomplete, okay, which will basically fill in the gaps. It'll kind of fill in the rest of something you started typing. And this will spare you a lot of trouble in some of the examples we'll be undertaking together. So please, I'll show you how to use autocomplete. And just remember, try to type less and use autocomplete more. It'll spare you typing, it'll spare you grief. And uh, it will help things go faster, okay? It'll spare you time. So, so uh, just be, bear in mind, that this is not a small matter. It's actually a really important thing for um, being able to, 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 to use the software in a virtuoso type fashion. Um, please ask questions. Um, we will be presenting, as can be clear here from these screens, I'll be making moderate use of this, uh, the whiteboards, but I'll be um, uh, doing most of the presentations from these screens. So, if you want to move close to the front, please do so. Um, there's plenty of open spots still, and it will put you in a better position to, to see some of the details. Um, uh, okay, there will be times where we, particularly for more advanced sessions, where we build up a model in successive phases, and I will post the results of earlier phases to the to um, uh, uh, to the um, site to the material site, so you can download them. So if someone messes something up, they can kind of resync by getting my copy of of the output. This is more for advanced material. Not everyone will be there, but um, if you are there um, and uh, try to make use of the ones I posted, if there's any doubt as to whether you've been able to, to keep up. For Wednesday, particularly, I'd ask you to bring a mouse um, if you're going to use your own computer. If you're gonna use these computers, there's mice already there, you don't have to worry about it. But if you wanna use your laptops, please bring a mouse for Wednesday because we're gonna be doing GIS, um, so models involving geography. Um, and we're gonna be hitting them as with much of the material on this rendition of the bootcamp at two different levels. One for people who just want to know, why would I use GIS? Why would I have a model with geography or spatial layout? What's the, what's the benefit of that? You know, like, why, why would I care about that? Um, and we'll have an introduction at that level, and then we will have further material for those wishing to go deeper or learn how to implement models with GIS, we'll have a session for that, okay? And um, for both, it'll be useful to have a model. Um, and then finally, help your neighbor. If you, have, if you get stuck, turn to your neighbor. If you notice your neighbor getting stuck with something, seem uncertain, try to help them out. Um, this is how, uh, um, how we can avoid a lot of, uh, a lot of problems. Um, projects. Projects are a central component. Um, students are encouraged to join. Um, and uh, you know, if, if you have more than one person in the project, we like to encourage cross-disciplinary teams. Um, 
Some people here are from more of a, uh, a quantitatively rich background, um, some from, um, from less so, and I'd like to encourage teams that mix them. Um, uh, we'll try to have a show and tell on Friday to, for the models, see where they are, and we're gonna have a dedicated incubator session on, on Saturday. Um, we have, around this floor, a set of rooms reserved for the balance of this event. This includes um, uh, a larger room down at the end of the corridor, just past the washrooms and to the left. Um, it's called 386, okay, S386. Um, if I said like the processor, probably not many of you would know what I meant. Um, but um, uh, that room will have some lectures in it, guest lectures. Um, uh, so many case studies will be delivered in that room. Um, uh, in addition to that, there's uh, a set of breakout rooms, smaller rooms uh, that go by the name 341, 342, three, uh, 71, and 372. Um, so in the interest of equitability, um, oh, okay, great. Um, we will bring out the arsenal. Um, I won't have to tap Wade's, um, I don't think. Uh, okay. There we go. Each year, we seem to refresh the markers in this building, and each year they are exhausted um, by the time the next summer goes along. Oh, look. Um, 340. Two and then S three seventy one and S three seventy two. These are breakout rooms, okay? Um, and these, I'm hoping, will be the site of a lot of project work. I want to be very clear. You folks are in an event which is designed to try to give value for each participant here. I welcome it if, if you feel that where you're getting the most value out of is your project work. You feel you're getting traction, you know, you're working with that TA and moving things forward, or you feel you're on an interesting direction with your example model, or you really feel that's what you want to get out of this event first and foremost. Um, because a lot of my droning can be found online. Um, if, if you want to take a TA at any point, starting right now, you want to take a TA away and you want to go off and build a model, great, go to one of these rooms, okay? Um, it, it, that, that would be where I'd suggest starting. And you're welcome to do that at any point. If you feel the material is getting above your head and it's, it's just not, you don't feel it's relevant, if, you, if you'd like to go uh, work on a project uh, with a TA, that's great. Try to go with the same TA each time um, because you'll have a degree of, of continuity and, and familiarity. Um, but uh, these incubator sessions are, are reserved all throughout the event for your use. And I'd love to see them, um, love to see them used uh, with, uh, as we say, a high duty cycle. Um, highly in use. So please uh, make use of them at any time, including from the beginning of each day to the end. Okay. Um, so each incubator is, is is housed in a in a designated sheet. We have a, a sheet we're composing. I'd love it if if we could have you know uh, defined places each project was associated. Um, uh, we're going to have uh, shared TAs. Uh, Jeff isn't here this year, alas. Um, um, uh, and we're going to have uh, myself and, um, and other more senior TAs uh, coming by as well. Okay, a few practical essentials. Um, uh, so this is administrivia, but it will be useful. So one thing is the location of these rooms. These rooms are located basically uh, around the other side of this wall and on that side and over down there. So if you walk to just outside the door, you go left, you'll sort of come out into a giant computer lab. Um, 
uh, with, with hundreds of computers. And if you go to your far left there, or you go to your far right, you'll reach alternatively 341 and 342, or 371 and 372, and they're marked. They're kind of at, at, the, at e either side of the big lab uh, out there. <clears throat> so that's if you go out the door to the left, and then to the left again, as there's a large lab which with those on either side. If you go out the door to the right, and to the right again, you will find um, uh, a quiet lounge area, okay? Um, and it's good for phone conversations or if you want to talk, uh, you know, quietly with the TA or whatever, that's, that's, that's also great. So that lounge area um, is, is uh, during the summer, it's not used as much and you're welcome to, uh, to make, make use of it um, uh, as a resource. Um, I mentioned the Google Drive site. I won't uh, go on to those, um, and I don't think we use dots this year. Um, okay, food. Um, oh gosh, this is this is outdated. We're not going to Louis Den. We had foodborne illness uh, <laughs> incident there. Um, so so this is um, Marcus Hall this year. Um, Sorry, I, I should have been more careful with this. We had a we had a foodborne illness uh, event last year, which was um, perhaps uh, uh, perhaps a, a good reminder as to the relevance of a foodborne illness model that I, I think was what may have also been featured last year, uh, detecting outbreaks of foodborne illness. Um, uh, the HMM would have uh, diagnosed it clearly. Um, so we have. Um, so we're going to have breakfast out here uh, every day. Uh, it's, we'll try to have it there by 8.30, even though we'll start at 9. Um, and snacks will be provided outside there as well, uh, midway through the morning and midway through the afternoon. Okay? Um, uh, and uh, if you want certain types of food you don't see, if you want more of those savory croissants or you, you'd like some yogurts, please let us know and we'd be glad to see what we can do. Lunches um, are in Marcus Hall. When I say lunch box, that's actually not something we can do in Marcus. It's something we can do in the faculty club. Um, but Marcus Hall, um, you'll have lunch talks in the form of conversation with, uh, uh, with other participants and sometimes with me, certainly with TAs. And dinners are on your own. We'll probably be breaking each day between 5 and 6, depending on the exact timing we, we, we finish up. Okay. Um, Okay, IT Essentials. This, this uh, lab is the site of this event for multiple reasons. One is the recording, but another compelling one is these computers. These computers are installed with AnyLogic, um, and AnyLogic can be run, uh, I believe, in both the Windows and Linux side of it, um, of, of these computers. Uh, I don't know, if, Wade, if you could check that out. I can confirm Windows right now. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it may be installed on the Linux side as well. Um, uh, for those seeking to log on, I would remind you again, it's on the back of your, your um, uh, tag uh, will be the logins for these computers. Um, uh, and uh, something to bear in mind, uh, in terms of um, viewing, um, other needs, sitting next to your TA, you may want to move around. Right? Um, your files are not stuck in the computer you've been on. So if you want to move tomorrow to near the front, uh, you want to be as far away from me as possible, um, you, you know, you can do so and still have access to your files, okay? So they're stored on the, on the, on your account, associated with your account, not the machine, right? Um, and uh, I had mentioned the, uh, the wireless uh, network um, Wade, for the wireless network, is it U of S guest? Yes. Okay, it's U of S guest, not U of S secure this year. Okay, okay. So here we go, U of S guest. And that's where you use the ZZZ that's listed for Wi-Fi access. Okay. Oh, um, okay. Laptop use of any logic. Um, so uh, if you're going to make use of any logic on your laptops, I'd suggest that you use the latest version 
of the PLE, Personal Learning Edition. However, if you have a more, if you have um, another version of any logic installed, just let us know and we'll do our best to help you accommodate. The challenge is that we will be building the models with AnyLogic 8.4. And if you try to open them in an earlier version of AnyLogic, it may exhibit displeasure. Okay? So, um, you know, it suggests making use of, of uh, AnyLogic 8.4 if, if you can. Okay, so those are some introductory remarks on sort of administrivia for the boot camp and what it's seeking to accomplish. I want to address right now any questions. We'll, uh, we'll then get into a little um, uh, interactive session involving a model that will illustrate some of the principles we'll be talking about within this event more broadly. Um, principles that are uh, going to to be important at the operational level and building models and understanding them, but also at the level of conceptually what we're doing with this sort of modeling. So are there any uh, questions that I can address first before we switch to that? I'm delighted to see TAs um, boldly, uh, boldly helping out who, who needs help participant-wise? Who would like a, a TA to help them out right now? Okay, would you like a TA sitting next to you? That would be good. Hey, how about that? Um, so, so TAs, um, I would like to suggest you weave yourself amongst the participants at your earliest convenience so that you, you can monitor confusion on either side and and intervene without ever leaving your seat. Okay? Okay, I, uh, hearing no objections, I, th that, that shall be the, the, uh, the rule, okay? Other questions, questions? Okay, great. So I'm going to close this recording and we're going to go on for the first uh, 